Good morning. Good to see everybody here this morning. Uh, it's 10.15, I'm late. I was, I was writing my announcements and I was drinking my coffee and I didn't pay attention of, of time. I gotta do one more thing here real quick. Okay, I needed to uh, plug in the microphone, so we would uh, we would be on the air and you would hear me better. So here we are again. Good morning, and uh, hopefully this is the only time that I'm off track. But uh, those of you that know me know that why we're we're liable to uh, kind of go off this way or that way. But anyways, I wanna welcome everybody, friends and visitors to our online worship. If you have questions or prayer requests or comments, you can text them to the number 330-862-3776. And uh, also, I'm glad that you're here watching. Um, we're thankful that you're here watching the stream and thankful for those who will watch later on. And please invite a friend to watch with you or share a video with them or share it on your, your timeline. Also, we post devotionals and Bible studies during the week, so please subscribe and, and click the notification indicators. Um, Facebook is a is a uh, drop down box, and YouTube is a bell, and so you'll know when something new has been posted. Now, to participate in the live stream, you can post in the comments on YouTube or Facebook. Let us know how that we can pray for you. And if you're watching this live, please say hi or leave a comment. Uh, it helps us to know who's watching and uh, we really appreciate it. You can email us so that we can learn a little bit more about you and stay connected with you. A Sunday morning Bible study is here at 9.15 on YouTube and Facebook. Prayer, prayer lists are posted in the Facebook page. You can mail in your tithes and your offerings or drop them in the mailbox here at the church or drop them off during the week. Now, Memorial Day. It's not gonna happen like it's happened in the past. Uh, the food stand, mainly because we always have trouble getting workers and at this point trying to get workers even if if the parade was going to happen would be difficult so we uh we will not be having uh, the memorial day parade or the events the night before uh, but they do have a bingo night planned now this week I did a Bible study and devotion and I've done devotions and I've done Bible studies. And if you could let me know in the comments which you prefer, a Bible study devotion, a devotion or Bible study. I would really appreciate that. That would be, ha that would be very helpful. Okay, at this time, we'll have our opening hymn, hymn number 332, My Jesus, I Love Thee.
forgot to mention that if you've been watching regularly we've moved we're not in the back we're up front and what I'll know more on Monday I have a meeting on Monday with with a group of churches that are statewide in Ohio and the discussion will be about reopening church the best and the safest way to do that but the reason we moved up front is because that is part of the preparation for reopening church. And uh, there's enough room for social distancing out there. And I will be up front and we'll have a small group initially of about 10 people to come and worship. And I'm thinking probably the people that are unable to participate in the online service would be the first ones to come back and participate here in the church. So that's what we're planning and it's going to be another probably two to four weeks, probably the end of June. Um, but it is, it is coming, but we want to make sure that we do it the safest way possible. God asks us to worship him through our giving. That's part of praising him, that's part of supporting the church, and we thank you for supporting us. And you can, you can mail in your tithes and your offerings, or you can drop them in the black box out front, also known as the mailbox, or you can uh, call and make sure that I'm here and drop them off here at the church. And so we thank you for, for continuing to support us and continuing to support the mission of this church and supporting God's mission.
So now we'll have our prayer time. What have you seen God doing this week? You can post it in the in the comments. I know there's been uh, several several uh, good things happening, and and then several prayer requests uh, came in. And uh, Elsie, as both of you know, had fallen and injured her shoulder, and it wasn't healing correctly, and she was in a lot of pain. She went back to the doctor, so they did surgery this week on her, and she is in community care of Alliance for Rehab. And uh, of course, being in rehab and, and the hospital, they're not allowing visitors, but we can maybe, because they're all on the same floor and I believe all the windows have rooms I mean, all, all, the, all, the, all the rooms have windows. We can surprise her, or you could stop by and surprise her and, and wave at her through, through the window. So even though you wouldn't be able to visit, you would still be able to go and see her and, and cheer her up. And, uh, and I'm sure the other people might, might cheer them up because I mean, I'm not, normally you don't look in people's windows, but at the same time, they're not, you know, they can't have any visitors, so maybe people looking through the window will, will brighten their day. Also, the nursing homes in Minerva are looking for cards. There's some residents in the nursing homes that do not get any mail at all. And so if you are willing to write a card or, or, may, uh, or send a card, it would be better if you would, you would uh, I'll, I'll post more details on exactly how to do this. Um, but if you send it, send it to the nursing home, um, you know, with an unspecified person, they will give it to somebody who doesn't receive mail and it'd be a chance, a way to cheer them up. Also, uh, there are certain things that we can do as the church. Um, they, they suggested like a bag of pretzels as a, as a gift for the people and the activity director would, would be willing to hand them out. Uh, they could use uh, jokes. If you're really handy with jokes, they, they like jokes. Um, one of the other things they suggested was a Tootsie Roll jar or a jar full of Tootsie Rolls. And they would go from room to room and guess the number of Tootsie Rolls. And I guess you could probably do almost anything that the residents could eat or would be allowed to eat as a as a guessing game. So that's some of the things that we can do as the church. And as you're sitting at home wondering what you could do, this is a good at home activity, which would cheer up the people in the nursing home. So that's a good thing. So continue to pray for Elsie for her healing and her rehab. We also received news that Sue Gibbons, our missionary is, um, has a form of lung cancer. She had been having coughing fits and they, they really couldn't pin it down to anything. Well, they finally figured it out. It's a, it's a form of lung cancer. So she's going to be undergoing chemotherapy down in Paraguay. And so continue to keep her in your prayers. There are, um, Several other prayer requests that I got this week. Uh, um, people that are that are sick, people that need our, need our prayers, and uh, so we need to continue to to pray for those that are on our prayer list. We need to pray especially for those that are in nursing homes. Um, Copeland Oaks is is still kind of being overrun with the uh, COVID-19 virus, but the other nursing homes so far are 
are holding their own and, and doing doing good. So we need to continue to pray for them. We need to continue to pray for those that are that are on our prayer list. And uh, we also need to pray for those that are sick. Uh, we need to pray for for our country as it opens up that the leaders are are making the right decisions that, and that people can get back to work because that's important because they're not receiving any income at all. But also we don't want to, to get sick and we don't want to cause others to get sick. So we need to pray for the virus to go away. We need to pray for a vaccine and we need to pray for that things continue to go well. We need to pray for those that are that are unemployed because they're having they're having a, a, a tough a tough time and, and the figures that we're seeing now haven't been seen since the Great Depression. And that's 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 a scary thing for a lot of people. So let us pray. Father, we thank you for for your wisdom, your guidance, we ask that you be with those that are sick. We ask that you continue to be with Elsie and heal her from her surgery. Continue to be with Sue and heal her so that she can continue to do her work down in Paraguay. Father, we pray for those that are on our list that need your healing touch, that need your comfort, that need your peace. We ask that you be with those that have chronic diseases to keep them safe, to keep them from, from being affected by this virus so that they can continue to, to live their lives. Father, continue to watch over us, keep us safe, watch over our church. We continue to ask for your wisdom and your guidance. We pray for our community and the leaders in our community, that you give them wisdom and that you give them courage and that you give them strength so that they do the right decisions for the people that they represent. Continue to show us your grace and your mercy. Continue to give us your peace. And most of all, continue to keep us well, keep us safe from sickness and safe from this virus. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, would you join me in praying the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our next hymn is number 63, Take the Name of Jesus with you. Would you join me in, in singing this hymn?
At this time, we'll have our Bible reading taken from Psalm 46, verses 1 through 11. For the choir director, a song of the descendants of Korah to be sung by soprano voices. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. A river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of the heaven's armies is, the, is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Come, behold the works of the Lord, how he has brought desolations on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the fire, the chariots with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. The Lord of the heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. At this time, we'll have our children's message. Good morning. The sun is out. It's a little warmer today. And it's a special day. It's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to anyone who's a mother that's watching. And um, uh, I was able to see evidence of uh, mothers this week. Um, it's spring, as you know, and the birds are returning. And it seems Especially like they're all Day. in pairs right now. Happy Mother's Day to anyone. Uh, my bird feeders, which a lot of times I don't keep them going this far into May, but it was so cold this weekend that I filled them up. Uh, I've seen house finches, the male and the female. I have two pairs. I had a pair of white crowned sparrows, and that's an unusual bird to come to my feeders. And uh, um, the rose-breasted grosbeaks and the Baltimore Orioles are back. In fact, I just saw the Baltimore Oriole for the first time this morning, and it was eating at my suet feeder, so I ran and got the um, Oriole feeder and put an orange on it and some grape jelly and put it out, and five minutes later, uh, they were eating at that feeder. Um, of course, the cardinals and the robins are already, I've got robins that I'm pretty certain have a nest because they squawk every time we walk by. And for the first time ever this week, I was out walking and I saw a blue jay with some nest material. And I was able to follow where it went and landed in a tree pretty high up. And sure enough, it had a nest started and I've never seen a blue jay nest before. So I was pretty thrilled by that experience. That was pretty cool. But uh, this Mother's Day is definitely different, though, for many. Um, there's people that can't be with their mothers today because their mothers are maybe in assisted living or a nursing home, and visitors haven't been permitted. But, and that would normally cause us to be upset and sad, but I'm hoping that 
you've found ways around that, whether with through a, an iPad or a tablet to have those kind of visits, um, and uh, or going outside uh, and standing outside their windows or anything that you can think of like that. And um, I saw a person that posted on Facebook that uh, he had talked to his mother yesterday and said he was so sorry that he wouldn't be able to be with her today. Um, and he had to work today, so he wasn't certain he'd actually even be able to call her. And his mother had a really great response. She said, every time you call is Mother's Day. So that's our point for today is that even if we can't be with our moms, or if we're missing our moms, uh, I'm thinking especially of my cousins who are not able to talk to their mom for the first time because she passed a few months ago. Um, and so it's a kind of an extra sad day for them. Um, but so no matter what your circumstances, if you have a mom and you're able, give her a call. And like Pastor Allen was talking earlier, there are some folks in the nursing homes around here that don't get any mail or contact at all. Maybe they don't have children or their children have passed away or the children are sick and not able to be in touch. Um, and we can help those mothers and some fathers out as well uh, by uh, maybe writing a card this week. And uh, um, as Pastor Alan said, he'll give further uh, information in the Facebook post on how to get it to them. So, uh, so no matter where you are or where your mom is today, uh, do your best to honor her and uh, have a great day. Amen. Okay, thank you, Chris. Our message today is from Psalm 46, and the title is Run to God. You don't necessarily have to run, you can you can you can walk. But if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Psalm 46, and the psalm is a song written by the sons, sons of Korah, kind of fits with Mother's Day, and it was written during a time of catastrophic dis disorder, a troublesome times, with unmatched uncertainty. And the psalm was written with the nation of Israel in mind, but it certainly applies to us today in our circumstances. Psalm 46, this is the introduction. For the choir director, if you notice in the psalm, sometimes they give you instructions for the singers, and this is one of the psalms that does this. It says, for the choir director, a song of, descent, of, of the descendants of Korah to be sung by soprano voices. So it sets up the instructions for it. Traditionally, for a long time, most music was written for, for men. And during the Middle Ages, they had uh, most of the songs and, and singing was done by men. And in particular, the religious songs were done by the, the monks in the monasteries. Okay, so it says a song for the descendants of Korah. What exactly does that mean? Well, Korah was a Levite, and he, um, he was a Levite back in Numbers 16, and he had a very blatant, very difficult rebellion against Moses and Aaron, and you can read about it in number 16, basically the whole chapter, that's, it's about the rebellion of, of Korah. 
And he is best known as the man who, while he was leading this rebellion, the earth opened up and swallowed him alive with all of his family and all of his associates after he revolted against the authority of Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. Now, he was a Kohathite, and he was responsible for transporting the items within the tabernacle, including the Ark of the Covenant, from place to place. And they reported to Eleazar, Aaron's son, who oversaw the, all the items in the tabernacle. Well, he wasn't assigned, he wasn't happy with his job. He complained about it. He rebelled against it. He wanted to be a priest, but that was not where God had placed him. And so he questioned the claim of Aaron and Moses to be the leaders and started a rebellion. Well, Moses pronounced a curse on the rebels and immediately in verses 31 through 33, the ground suddenly split open beneath them. The earth opened its mouth and swallowed the men along with their households and all their followers who were standing with them and everything they owned. So they went down alive into the grave along with their belongings. The earth closed over them and they vanished from among the people of Israel. And then Numbers 16, verse 35, then fire blazed forth from the Lord and burned up the 250 men the other rebellious people who had burned incense. Okay, long story. It says it swallowed up his descendants, but here, or his family here, we have the descendants, the sons of Korah. And so there are two good things to this story of Korah in Numbers. In the New Testament, what happened to Korah is used as a warning to teachers who harass false teachers, who, who teach falsely, who harass the church. And in Judah it says, woe to them, they have been destroyed in, like in Korah's rebellion. So number one, it's a warning to us. And number two, the descendants of Korah, apparently his sons either did not take part in the rebellion or they were young enough where they were not at the age of, of accountability and they were spared by God. But whatever it was, they found favor in the eyes of God and seven generations after Korah died, the, the prophet Samuel, we have two books in the Old Testament by Samuel, arose from the line of Korah. The Korites later became doorkeepers and custodians in the tabernacle. One group of the Korites joined King David in, in the various military adventures that he did, and they, became, they earned a reputation as expert warriors and at the time of King David, the sons of Korah became leaders in the choral and the orchestral music of the temple. And of the Psalms, 11 of them are attributed to the sons of Korah. Psalm 42, 44 through 49, 84 through 85, 87 through 88. So now if you get that question on Jeopardy, you know at least three answers. So that's why that's important. Well, during our problems, during our sufferings, whatever comes into our lives, we have this promise from Psalm 46, verse one. God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. See, God promises that he is for us. The Bible tells us that God is our creator, he is our king, he is our judge, 
and he is our savior. And during whatever we're feeling today, whatever this, whatever we're feeling in this season of virusness, God promises to be our refuge, our strength and our help. He's not saying you can find refuge over here. He's saying, I am your refuge. God is our refuge even when things that seem certain are now so uncertain. See, we've been told to shelter in place, and while we do that, it's a perfect time for us to seek God or to get reacquainted with God. We need to pray like it says in Psalm 142, verse 5. Then I pray to you, O Lord, I say, you are my place of refuge. You are all I really want, all I really want in life. See, God promises to hide us in his shelter. And he says he can help us by his strength. And he is also a very present help in trouble. See, God promises he is always ready to, to help in times of trouble. Aren't you glad that we serve and follow a God who comes to our assistance when we are suffering? He's always available, he's always accessible, as Psalm 9, verse 9 says. God is our shelter. The Lord is a shelter for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And so now we move into verse 2 of Psalm 46. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. See, in verse two, the writer of this psalm is thinking of the worst, the worst thing, the worst possible scenario that could happen. Earthquakes, volcanoes erupting, and mountains falling into the sea. It's a picture of a symbol of the destruction of the world. And see, mountains provided refuge in times of war, and they were the most secure parts of nature because it's always easier to defend the high position because the people trying to take over have to come up, and you have the advantage by shooting down, shooting arrows down, at them. And see, mountains were the most fixed and firm things on the earth. But even the mountains will be destroyed. Verse 3. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. See, verse 3 describes the roaring waters of the sea which can be a picture of our lives when our lives are out of control. Roaring means to be in great disturbance, to rage, to be at war, to be back and forth. And so here we are with our supply chains disrupted, churches meeting online, hospitals were bracing for new cases, and grocery stores are emptied of certain foods and, and necessities, toilet paper. And so we feel unstable. We feel the uncertain nature of the predicament that we're in. But remember, no matter what, we have this promise from God. Psalm 91 verses five and six. Do not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in the darkness, nor the disaster that strikes at midday. See, this virus, like a plague, seems to be menacing the whole world. It's invisible, and in the darkness of night, it feels inescapable. 
but God is in control of everything. We can run to him for refuge. We can run to him for shelter. See, when our security is gone, when we're afraid, we need to seek refuge in God himself. Bob Goff, a writer, said this, an author, he said, it's easy to trust God when he does what we want. It's the other times when we grow. And that's so true. It is easy to trust God when he does what we want, when things go our way. Otherwise, it can be tough, and many a person has lost their faith because things didn't go the way they wanted or the way they expected. So remember this, even though the whole world is turned upside down, you can run to God for refuge. We can do that right now. Well, let's look at verses four through seven. A river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city, it cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of the heavens armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. See, God promises to be our shelter when we seek him. And the good news is, is we don't have to run far to find him because he is right here with us. See, it talks about God being in his city. Jerusalem had something that no other city in the, in the ancient world had. It had the very presence of God. See, and God's presence with his people is one of the very key truths of scripture from beginning to end that God is with us. In verse five is a great promise. God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. At that time, God dwelt in the city of Jerusalem. Well, God lives inside of us through the Holy Spirit. And if that city could not be destroyed because God lived there, then God living in us means that we cannot be destroyed. No matter how bad things get, God's presence means he will help us. When we wake up to start a new day, we will experience what Jeremiah did in Lamentations chapter three, verses 22 through 23. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. And look what Paul reminds us about God in Romans. Romans chapter eight, verse 39. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing, nada, not a thing, nothing in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. And it says God, God is present with his people, even when, as it says in verse six, the nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. And verse seven says that the Lord of the heavens armies is here with us, is here among us, the God of Israel is our fortress. We can depend on God during times like this because of his promise, his presence, and finally because of his power. We see the heart of God in verses eight through 11. Let's look at verse eight. Come see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. See, verse 8 tells us that we come to see, we must see the glorious works of the Lord. 
And one thing that's happening this day with, with many churches is they're online and we see this uncertainty. Well, many people are seeking God, seeking his presence, seeking to know about him right now. And that's a good thing. In verse nine, God causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow, the bow, and snaps the spear. He burns the shields with fire. So the weapons of war, God is going to do away with them. The Assyrian Empire at that time was the greatest in the world. It had already overrun many of the smaller kingdoms and their goal was to conquer the entire world. But God had other plans. Now, hasn't it felt like there's nothing we can do to stop this virus? You know, many people have felt helpless. Some have even felt hopeless. But in his position as sovereign king, God is in charge. He's in charge of the world. He's in charge of the heavens. He's in charge. He's in control of this virus. Verse 10 says, be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. See, in verse 10, we're called to be still and know that God is God. We need to stop fighting a battle that we can't win against God. And it's more, being still is more than a moment of silence. It's more than just being quiet. It's a surrender. It's to let God in our lives, to let go of everything else because we don't have control of it. We never did. God is the only one that's in control. Psalm 37 verse seven says it well. Be still in the very presence of the Lord and wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about the evil people who prosper and fret about their wicked schemes. The purpose of being still is so that we can know God. Let's go back and look at verse 10 and notice the, birth, the last part of verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored. I will be honored among the nations and he, God, will be honored throughout the world. He is working out all things for his glory and for our greatest good. See, no matter what happens, remember this, God will be honored among the nations. God will be honored throughout the world. He is working out all things for his glory. And then Psalm 46, verse 11. The Lord of the heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Now, that is a repeat of verse seven. There is nothing that's happening today or will happen tomorrow that is outside of God's plan. Nothing ever catches God by surprise. And through incredible disruption or the worst that can happen. Those who know Jesus Christ have nothing to fear. Whether the coronavirus leads to more catastrophe, more confusion, or the nations raging against one another, God is our refuge. We need to be still. We need to praise God for his power. James chapter four, verse 14 asks this question. 
How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while and then it's gone. We can't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We have today and our life is just like a fog. And we're reminded in Proverbs 27, Proverbs 27, verse 1, don't brag about tomorrow since you don't know what the day will bring. And that's so true. Life is, is way too unpredictable. Life is too short to live it without God at the center. Psalm 46 tells us how and why to live our lives with Jesus at the center of it. You know, we count our lives in years. Every year we celebrate another birthday. But God tells us to number our days. Psalm 90 verse 12. Teach us to number our days carefully so that we may develop wisdom in our hearts. Here's the truth, all of it. Me, you, we're just one heartbeat away from eternity. A car accident, a viral infection, there are a thousand things that can cause you to die in an instant. So we need to be prepared. There's a thing called the ABCs of salvation. And like the alphabet started in alpha, alpha, beta, it gives us the steps that we need to take to make sure that we are in the right relationship with God. And the first thing is to admit that that admit that we're a, str a sinner and that we make mistakes. And the second thing, B, is to believe. Believe that Jesus is God's only son and that he died on a cross for us. And then the third thing, the most important thing, is to commit. Commit yourself to a life of following Jesus and serving others. Will we be the same? No, we won't be the same. And we can't be the same. But we can lift up God in the world and we can lift up Jesus and his church. We can trust God for his shelter and his safety. And for those who are believers, remember what verse one says. God is our refuge and strength always ready to help in times of trouble. See, God is always there. Remember to call on him in good times and bad times, and he will make the difference in our lives. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for Psalm 46. We thank you that you are our strength, God, that you are always with us, that Jesus is here with us and Jesus can and will and is changing our lives. Continue to guide us, watch over us, protect us with your hedge of protection. Continue to give us your very real presence. And most of all, let us take refuge in you this day and always as we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And look for the Children's Church video and the handouts online in about 10 or 15 minutes so that you can have Children's Church. Have a great Sunday and a great week.